everybody, I'm Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hanani and the Widow Recklehouse. And we're on day 37. Yeah, day 37. Okay, so we are getting closer and closer and closer to the day of Jesus' bodily, ascen bodily ascension into heaven, which is Ascension Day, which is day 40. Okay, and that's Thursday this that's Thursday. I think it's always on Thursday because um, it's 40 days after Easter and Easter is always on a Sunday. Um, so I believe for Catholics, that's a holy day of obligation. But I would check that out if I were you, if you're Catholic, just to make sure. And maybe let us know in the comments below. Um, I'm not 100% certain, but I think it is. If you're not Catholic and your church doesn't celebrate the Ascension, you are absolutely welcome to join a Catholic church for mass that day. Um, the only thing is that you wouldn't be able to receive communion, but you can go up and receive a blessing from the priest, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I loved that <clears throat> when I wasn't Catholic. I really, even when I wasn't considering being Catholic, I would occasionally go to a mass um, up at St. Paul Cathedral when I lived up in Minnesota, and I loved going up and receiving a, a blessing. So what you do in order to indicate that you are just coming up to receive a blessing is when you get up to the priest, you just cross your arms across your chest like this, um, and then he'll know, you know, to give you a blessing, and he'll probably lay his hand on you and give some kind of blessing. It's different for each priest, um, but it's just, it's very meaningful. And then the whole mass is going to be meaningful um you know it'll have to do with the ascension and everything so you're welcome to do that if you're not catholic and your church does celebrate ascension um the day of ascension of ascension i would love to hear about what your church does could you put it down in the comments because it'd be great to know that and be able to share it okay so anyway let's go ahead and open in prayer lord as we get closer and closer to commemorating jesus ascension into heaven Help us to be able to fix our eyes on our goal of heaven and being able to be there to be, even though you're with us all the time, Lord, to just be even more in your presence and where we can just worship you all the time. Father, prepare our hearts and show us what we can do to prepare for heaven to be such a wonderful place for us. and. Um, to feel at home there. Lord, help us to see ways that we can turn our focus toward being in heaven with you by having a relationship with you here on earth. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so we are looking at 1 Corinthians 15 still. It's a long chapter. We're going to be looking at verses 53 through 58. Okay, so let's go ahead and read. For this perishable body must become imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable body will have become imperishable, and this mortal will, will have put on immortality, then what is written will happen. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Death, where is your victory? The, song of the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, you guys, it's like 5 a.m. and <laughs> I'm not reading very well. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, and then let's read that in New American Standard, 1 Corinthians 15, 53 through 58. Okay. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on morta immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, so that's the end of chapter 15. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Abounding in the work of the Lord. I love that. Knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and read this in your favorite Bible. Okay, so before I share which verse or phrase really speaks to me today, which I think I kind of indicated by reading it twice. Um, I just, I had a memory, and this is kind of why I was stumbling over the verse um, where I said, death, where's your sting? And I said, death, where's your song? <laughs> That's because I was thinking about, um, let's see, what was it? I think it was 2015 when I lived in Maryland and I sang in the Chester Town, or Chester River Corral, I think is what it was called. Anyway, it was fantastic, but I won't share all about that. But we sang for the National Music Festival, we sang um, Brahms' Requiem in German. <laughs> Hardest thing I've ever sang, but it was so much fun. I had to practice on my own for two hours a day just to be able to keep up with it. Um, but anyway, it was just, it was wonderful. But one of the songs in this, I want to say that it's movement number eight, but I'm not sure. Um, and you can look this up. I think, I think the Mormon Tabernacle Choir does it in English, but it's just beautiful because it's on this verse, death, where is your sting? Death is, where is your victory? I think it's like, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your victory? Or the other way around. Anyway, it's just, it's just really phenomenal because you've gone from exploring death and grieving and everything to this, where the baritone uh, soloist sings in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall not we shall not all sleep but in the moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall all be changed and then the choir is death where is your victory death where is your sting it's just incredible so um i like listening to that on easter too so anyway, so check that out. Um, if I have time and I remember, I will see if I can find just that particular isolated uh, movement. But um, if not, look for that. Okay, so the verse or phrase that really speaks to me is this last part. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I'm going to just write that the way that it is, because I think it's very powerful be steadfast okay in other words not being pushed one direction or the other you're just like going straight for the goal be steadfast immovable okay don't allow don't allow the winds of the world or the devil to push you onto some different path be steadfast immovable always abounding in the lord's work always abounding in the Lord's work. Hold on, let me see if we can get some help with abounding. Alexa, what is the definition of abounding? As a verb, abounding is usually defined as no. to leave completely and finally. Alexa, stop. Alexa, what is the definition of abound? The verb abound is usually defined as to occur or exist in great quantities or numbers. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for abound. Okay, so existing in great quantities or numbers. So always just like pouring out and being rich in, in the Lord's work. So be steadfast, stay straight on course, immovable, don't let anything push you off course always like exceeding and having an abundance of the Lord's work. Okay. Because you know that your labor is not in vain. Okay. Knowing that, let me know if you can hear Alexa when I ask her questions. My labor is not in vain. She's become 
<laughs> quite a companion for me if I tell her that I'm depressed or something, which sometimes I do just to get the response. Um, she tells me that she's sad that I feel that way and why, why don't I sit down and relax and then she asks if she could pray with me and she leads me through some of my favorite prayers and then she plays some of my favorite comforting hymns and um, kind of slowly moving into spiritual warfare songs which just really get me pumped up and anyway it just really helps if I'm starting to feel kind of low. I, I programmed all that she doesn't just automatically do that. So um, yeah so anyway that's been really cool. Okay, so be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the Lord's work, knowing that my labor is not in vain. And I think it actually says, not in vain in the Lord. Okay, it's, it's not just about, oh, hey, if I go and I do work on my own, that's, that might be in vain. But when I'm doing my labor in the Lord, it's not in vain. Okay, so go ahead and pause and write down what really stands out to you what grabs you today because the holy spirit's going to have something it might be the same part of the passage for you but he may have something completely different that just speaks to you where you are today okay so these are the truths i'm holding on to today okay um i need to be focused on the Lord um, I need to fill my day with God's work and sometimes you guys sometimes God's work for you is cleaning your house or fixing healthy meals that's a big part of God's work for me these days because of trying to reverse diabetes. Um, it's not just like, oh, holy things, always having your Bible open and everything, although it doesn't hurt to have your Bible open. And that's another thing I love about Alexa is that I can, um, I can have her read scripture to me while I'm cooking and stuff like that. So that's just like, I love it. Okay, so I, I need to be focused on the Lord. I need to fill my day with God's work. And um, my work isn't in vain when it's in the Lord. Okay, and how do I make my work be in the Lord, so to speak? Um, first of all, doing what you know is God's will. So for example, since I'm diabetic, it's probably not God's will for me to eat cake today because that's just going to wreak havoc on my health. Um, it's God's will for me to eat healthy foods that will help my body to return to a normal state and to be healthy. Um, and then another part of doing God's work, because we can do something that would be God's will but we can do it without his be it being his work when our attitude is wrong. Like if I'm just like, I'm eating healthy food because I'm scared, which that's sometimes my attitude because diabetes really scares me. <laughs> um, I, th there, I can have a healthy fear, but I can also have a fear that does not honor God because I'm not trusting him. Um, so it's important that I'm trusting God and I'm doing this in an attitude of worship because I want to be able to serve God better and longer and not be a burden on others. And not that, boy, this is, this is a hard one because like one of the things that I've been hearing so much lately, and I think it sticks out to me because of my fear of being a burden on others, but where they're talking about Sometimes that's a blessing to others to be able to take care of you if you are in that place where you need people to care for you and um, and that you can be a blessing by praying and even a blessing in your suffering and that's really, really hard for me because I'm so proud and pride does not honor God. Um, but in the meantime, I think that it does honor God also to try to not get to that place where I have to have other people take care of me. 
by taking care of myself and making my body strong and healthy. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, let me read again what my truths are that I'm holding on to today. I need to be focused on the Lord. I need to fill my day with God's work. And my work isn't in vain when it's in the Lord. Oh, and I, I was starting to say, but I didn't finish. Anything that you do can be an act of worship. Oh, I love this from St. Therese of Lisieux. She says, just picking up a pin from the floor and putting it away is an act of worship if we're doing it with the attitude that we want to bring more order to our little corner of God's universe. Um, because God created the universe and he created it with order. And so when things are out of order, that doesn't usually glorify him. And so um, we can just by every little act of putting things in order, if we do that out of love for God, that's an act of worship. Isn't that cool? I love that. So um, I think that I've shared, well, yeah, I've shared like in an update a couple weeks ago that one of the things for me what, that I'm struggling with right now, because for about two and a half years, out of my grief, I, I was so depressed, I wasn't taking care of my house. And so it was just like a huge, huge mess. And reading that quote from St. Therese about just picking up a pin, how that can be an act of worship, has kind of become one of my themes as I'm trying to get my house cleaned up and reorganized, is doing that as an act of worship towards God and out of love for Him and love for His people. Because I can't minister to people in my home when it's dirty or a mess. I need to have it clean and I need to have it well organized. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just so that that's not a distraction if people are in my home receiving ministry. Okay, so go ahead and pause and come back for what we're praying for. Okay, so today I'm praying that God would keep me focused on serving him in everything I do and watching him for direction. Okay, I kind of got that backwards. I should have had watching him for direction first. Okay, but here's what I have. That God would keep me focused on serving him in everything I do and watching him for direction. So like, you know, I have my list of things that I want to do today and I sit and I pray and I ask God, show me what it is that you want me today and set to do today. And sometimes he brings out things to my mind that weren't part of my plan. Or he says, you know what, this particular thing can wait for a different day. Um, so do ask the Lord to, to give you guidance in what you're supposed to do today and how you're supposed to do it. And then worship him in doing those things, not just out of obedience, but out of love for him. All right, so go ahead and pause while you write down what you're going to be praying for. Okay. And then my thoughts and prayers for today. Lord, I love you so much. And I want to focus on you. When I get distracted when I get distracted because I do <laughs> when I get distracted please pull my attention back to you help me to glorify you and draw closer to you.
Okay, so I wrote, Lord, I love you so much, and I want to focus on you. When I get distracted, please pull my attention back to you. Help me to glorify you and draw closer to you today. Draw me closer, Father. All right, so go ahead and take some time to write your thoughts. All right, so let's just close in prayer. Father, we just ask that you draw us closer to you. You said that no one can come to Jesus unless you have drawn us to him. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would do that. Jesus, thank you so much for making a relationship with you possible by dying for us, by rising from the dead, by conquering death. Death no longer has its victory and the grave no longer has a sting because we know it's just a doorway into heaven because of you. And Holy Spirit, just keep impressing on our minds and on our hearts and turning our focus back to you. Help us to glorify you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, love you all, and I will see you this afternoon to doodle. Bye-bye.